What's going on music lovers and welcome to another episode of Music Culture Daily. I am your host Maurice. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. And on today's episode, we're going to discuss and review Jay-Z's sixth album, The Blueprint. As I just mentioned, The Blueprint is Jay-Z's sixth studio album. This album was released on September the 11th, 2001. This album was released through Rockefeller Records and Def Jam Recordings. This album received critically acclaimed and it went on to sell 474,000 copies in its first week. This album is notable for its production and Jay-Z's uh, ability to carry an album pretty much by itself since no one else was featured on this album outside of Eminem who was featured on the 13th track entitled Renegade which became a classic as far as Eminem's verse on there. Everybody knows it. It's a definitely a classic verse that Eminem spit on Renegade. This album had production from Bink, had production from Kanye West, production from Timberland, The Trap Masters, Just Blaze, and Eminem to name a few. This album was most for uh, known for its samples, which was pretty much a lost art at that time um, during this time when this album came out. Jay-Z pretty much brought back the sampling, the soul sampling with this album. So that's why I like this album. I think this is Jay-Z's best album. And yes, that's, that includes Reasonable Doubt. I love Reasonable Doubt. It's definitely a classic. But I think this album is more well-rounded. It has more depth to it. And like I said, with the soul samples that especially what Kanye West and Just Blaze did was definitely unmatched. You know, as far as what they did on Song Cry, You Don't Know, Ain't No Love, you know, The Heart of the City. Even the commercial songs, as far as like uh, Izzo and um, Girls, 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 and he had a classic disc record on there that Kanye took and flipped that uh, sample um, called, you know, Take Over when he was dissing Nas and Prodigy and pretty much everybody in the industry, letting everybody know that he was the king of rap at that time and that Rockefeller was the 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 number one and they was running that rap shit. You know, I just I just love everything about it. Jay-Z was a vet in the game, so that's why if I had to rank this album, I would rank this album as number one in Jay-Z's catalog, even ahead of Reasonable Doubt. This album saw four uh, singles released. Uh, the first single, Izzo, was released on August 21st, 2001. The second single, Girls, 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 was released on October 2nd, 2001. The third single, Jigga That Nigga, was released on January 29th, 2002. And the fourth and final single on the album, which is one of my personally favorite songs on the album, Song Cry, was released on April 16th, 2002. The album was well received by critics. The album received a five mic album ranking in the Source magazine. Everybody knows that was pretty much all you needed back then because the source pretty much gave you uh, credibility in hip hop. So if your album got five mics in the source, it was definitely a hip hop classic. That's what they viewed as the ultimate classic in hip hop. So this album received five mics out the gate. It received a double XL in double XL magazine, which is their equivalent of five mics, a perfect score. That's pretty much what that means. Um, Jay-Z, it was just a dope album, man. It went on to sell over 2 million copies. Uh, recently, as of 2019, it was selected by Library of Congress for uh, preservation of the National Recording Registry. The album, they say it was uh, cut in two weeks. And Jay-Z uh, reportedly uh, wrote the lyrics to the, um, to the album in two days. Uh, like I said, you know, from everything from TakeOver to Song Cry, You Don't Know, which is probably my favorite song on the album because Jay-Z was basically laying out the blueprint to what you see today. You know, I like how he, the stuff that he rap about, he was telling you his plan and his vision, which was bigger than rap, that he wasn't going to be just put in, you know, pigeonhole. He wanted to do, you know, more business as far as like clothing brands and get into different type of businesses, which is what you are seeing him doing and what he eventually became. So you don't know, which was produced by um, 
just plays definitely he was laying out that blueprint if you listen to that song so i would say that's that I, I love every song on the album it's one of the few albums that i can listen to from start to finish don't skip one song you know even when he starts the album off with as far as like the root you know the ruler is back using the impolation of the uh slick rick song that came out back in the day and everything and like I said, it just got, you know, great reviews from all music publications like Rolling Stone, Complex Magazine, uh, Spin Magazine, Wire Magazine. Um, like I said, the Source Magazine, which to me and to a lot of people that followed hip hop back then was the only um, verification that you needed in hip hop. If your album, you know, you wanted to see what that album was ranked, how many mics did it get? So if you got five mics, that's an instant clip hip hop classic. So this album, definitely a classic, especially what they did with the soul samples. Pretty much every song uh, featured like a soul sample with the exception of a few songs like Jigga That Nigga, Ola Vito, which was a Timberland produced track, and uh, Renegade, which was produced by Eminem. I think those are the only three songs on the album that didn't feature a sample or a soul sample. Man, I love what Jay-Z did. With he, he went left field. Um, because his previous albums were more bounce, more like more energy, more dance, more commercialized. Throughout the album, he had the Rockefeller camp featured on his previous albums a lot, like Beanie Single and Memphis Bleak. But on this album, he went totally left field. He did something different. He had like a slow down pace. It was like soul sampling. It was more like mature type songs. And he pretty much did the album by itself he just had one feature artist and like i mentioned that was eminem on the song renegade it's basically pretty much put kanye west and just blaze on the map because which they deserved it they were definitely in their bag on this one their production crazy the production that they laid out the songs that they produced song cry was amazing um you don't know like i mentioned takeover pretty much everything man jay-z was really at the top of his game he released his album he just went on and did some big things like i said the soul sampling on this album was amazing it was one of the best albums in the history of hip-hop it was recorded at baseline studios in new york city which was a rockefeller uh recording studio where pretty much where jay-z and the whole rockefeller uh family recorded most of their albums during that time it was executive produced by sean carter which is jay-z that's his real name damian dash and kareem biggs burke um it features samples from the likes of the doors michael jackson al green david ruffin the jackson five uh bowie's um fame five to one by the doors which was used for the takeover uh sample that kanye just that was a genius how he flipped that and made it into a diss track so if you i want to do a video on that too as well the making of takeover all that kind of stuff so can't go wrong with this album if you haven't heard it you definitely need to check it out give it a listen definitely one of the best albums that i've heard period in hip-hop I'm against anybody like i said i enjoyed jay-z's catalog for the most part especially my top albums like black album the blueprint reasonable doubt but the blueprint to me stands above all of them so that's pretty much you know what i have to say about that the um third song Izzo uh was produced by Kanye West he geniusly flipped that Jackson 5 sample and made this song into a memorable song that everyone loved so shout out to Kanye West for that and the third and the fourth song on the album was girls 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 which had additional vocals from slick rick q-tip and biz marquee if you really listen closely you can hear each one of them singing on the chorus in the hook of the song and that was produced by just blaze um the fifth song jigga that nigga was produced by pone and tote which make up the trap masters the sixth song you don't know was put uh was produced by just blaze one of my favorite songs on the album the seventh song Ola Vito was produced by Timbaland the number eight song Heart of the City Ain't No Love which Kanye West said in the past that he initially made that beat for uh, Heart of the City for DMX may DMX rest in peace Kanye West said he originally made Ain't No Love the Heart of the City uh, beat you know he had DMX in mind when he was making that beat you know just a fun fact and the number nine song on the album Never Change which was produced by Kanye West as well the number 10 song, Song Cry, which was produced by 
Just Blaze, the number 11 song, All I Need, uh, was produced by Bink, and so was the intro song, The Ruler Is Back, was produced by Bink as well. The 12th song on the album was Renegade featuring Eminem, and that was produced by Eminem. Uh, the 13th and final song on the album was entitled Blueprint, Mama Loves Me, was produced by Bink as well. And the song and the album also had additional hidden tracks which was Breathe Easy, Lyrical Exercise, that was produced by Just Blaze, and Girls, 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 Part 2, which was produced by Kanye West. And other, you know, notes on the album that people may not know or may not, may didn't catch, Never Change, uh, feature Kanye West in the uncredited uh, role that was actually him on the verse. I never changed basically what he was saying, the sample and everything like that. That was Kanye West voice, you know, filling out the verse pretty much. So basically, you know, that's pretty much my rundown of the blueprint, which is one of my favorite albums. One of my favorite um, albums of all time. Definitely my favorite album by Jay-Z. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And please like, comment and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Until next time, let's keep pushing the culture forward. And I'll be back with you guys with another video.